Welcome to day three of the advent of code. Today our job is to navigate a terrain, which you can see over here, and in that terrain are trees, which are marked by these hash signs. And we're supposed to walk in a, a diagonal line, so always three steps to the right and one step down, and then look at the spot and see if there's a tree or not. So in this case, there is no tree. If we do it again, now there is a tree, and if we do it again, there's no tree. And if we do it again, it looks like we're leaving the map, but this is a, a magical map. So if you go two steps to the right, then you uh, start over at the left and then we take our third step and here's um, the next tree. So you can imagine that every line is copied an infinite number of times. Or you can simply imagine just like Pac-Man when you reach uh, uh, the right border, you start over at the left border again. Okay, so we do that uh, for uh, basically every line in our um, terrain, and then we should have a total count of the number of trees that we encountered. Okay, so inspired by the previous puzzles, I prepared a read lines function, which simply converts a lazy sequence of lines into an eager vector. And then I read the input into a global variable called terrain. And here you can see terrain is a vector of strings. So here's a string at index zero, string at index one, string at index two, um, and so on. And if we want to know how many strings are there, are there, we can simply count the terrain and then we see uh, there's about 300 lines that we have to cross. Okay, cool. Um, so that takes care of the, of the height of the map, 300 lines. But what about the width? How would we get at the width. So first of all, uh, we would have to look at any of those 300 lines, doesn't really matter, they all have the same length or width. So here's, for example, the first line. And uh, then we have to simply count how many characters there are. So count not only works for uh, uh, eager collections and lazy sequences, but also for strings. Okay, and we see the uh, string has 31 characters in it. So maybe let's store that number with a let binding. Let's call it width. Okay, here's now our width. And um, so if we look at the terrain again <laughs> here, um, so what do we actually want to do? So here in line zero, we want to access at index zero. In line one, we want to access at index uh, three. Uh, then, I'm sorry, three. Then at uh, line three, we want to in index at uh, index six and so on. Okay, so it, it would be really nice to generate a sequence of those indexes. So zero, three, six, nine, twelve, and so on. And how can we generate such a sequence? We can use the iterate function. It takes a function at a starting value. Our starting value is zero. And how do we get from one value to the next? We simply add three to the first parameter. Okay, and now here we have it, 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, and so on. Unfortunately, <laughs> this is the first index that will lead into a crash because um, this is the maximum index if we have 31 indices. So um, we have to um, implement the wraparound logic, the, the Pac-Man logic. How would we do that? We simply um, use the mod function for that. So mod, in case you're unfamiliar, that's what <laughs> uh, this operator does in Java. It simply divides the first number uh, by the second and then gives us the rest of the division. And if you divide by 31, the rest is always between 0 and 30 inclusive. And here we can see it. Here's the first wraparound. Um, here's the second wraparound. And here's our third wraparound. And then the sequence uh, repeats itself. Exactly. Okay, cool. So those uh, are the columns that we want to index. So let's also store that. Let's say columns should be this. Okay. And then we want to um, combine these um, indices with our terrain. Right. So remember the terrain looks like this. So I'd, I would like to combine uh, this string with zero, this string with three, this three string with six and so on. So we can, for example, say um, map the vector function over the terrain and the columns. Um, <clears throat> so up until now, you probably only saw vec, uh, I'm sorry, map 
with a function and a collection, but a map is overloaded to take multiple collections. So in our case, for example, the first element in the result from map would be a vector of, uh, with the first line and the first index. Uh, next element would be the second line and the second index and so on. And here indeed you can see it, uh, we combined uh, line zero with index zero, uh, line one with uh, our index three and so on. Okay, so that's uh, uh, interesting to see that, to use the vector function for that for demonstration purposes. But what we want to do in reality is of course to look up uh, this index in this string. And again, we do that with our good old nth function. And here we can see it, right? These are the characters that we looked up. Let's call them, let's say spots, all the spots <laughs> that we visited. And um, how many spots are there? Should be 323 because we visited every line exactly once. Okay, so that's reassuring. Um, and of course, we're only interested in the trees, right? So we have to filter uh, for equality with a tree. Okay, how, how would that look? Oh, I forgot to pass the collection. That would be the spots like this. Now uh, we only see the trees. So let's save that as trees. And then we can ask how many trees are there. Should be less than 323. And indeed it's 184. And that's the number that was accept accepted by the website. Your result is probably different. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, right, so that was the first part. And in the second part, the number three um, vary. So we, we try once with a number one, then three, then five, then seven. So it's probably a good idea to take this code and um, extract it into a function. Let's call it uh, navigate because we navigate the terrain. And then we say steps right is our um, abstraction over the number three. And if we compile this function and say navigate of three, we should get 184 again. Here it is. And if we pass in a different value, we get a different result. Okay, so we should do it for one, three, five, and seven. One, three, five, and seven. And then we're supposed to multiply the results. Um, just like many other operator functions, uh, we can pass an arbitrary number of arguments to the multiplication operator, and then we get a temporary value. But we're not done yet. So there's a fifth number that we also should uh, multiply into the result. And that is navigating by taking one step to the right, but two steps down instead of one step down. Okay, and our navigate function doesn't account for that at all. So um, here specifically the spots that we visit um, map over the entire terrain, right? We can't easily say I only want uh, every second line here. Okay, so I think it's best to also abstract over the terrain. So for now here we access a global variable, which is in good style anyway. So um, let's copy this, introduce it as a parameter here. We don't have to change anything. So the parameter now takes precedence over the global, just normal scoping rules. But let's not forget to compile the function. And then of course we have to pass the terrain at every call site. Okay, and then we can think about how can we now pass only lines uh, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. And we can do that with the take nth function, okay, where we simply pass in uh, the number 2 because we want every second element, and then uh, this is our input collection, and that should do exactly uh, what we want, right? So, for a different example, if I say take nth 2 of uh, and then some numbers then you can see we only get the um, even uh, indexed elements. Okay, so that was the result that was accepted by the website and then uh, I was already done. So most of the time was spent researching the existence of this function. If you know what a function but does but you don't know its name, uh, it pays to have good Google skills to find the right Stack Overflow question and answer. Okay, so... Um, what did we learn today? So you probably weren't familiar with the iterate function. That's quite uh, useful in scenarios like this. Um, then the um, power of map to take multiple collections. So here you see uh, the version that you normally use 
And here you see the version that takes two collections, but there are also overloads for three collections um, and more than three. Okay, and then filter and counting, you already knew that. Um, again, you could pass as many arguments to a multiplication as you want, and the take m function uh, is quite helpful in the circumstances where you need it. Okay, so I've personally found day three a bit simpler than day two, <laughs> but I heard at the weekends the problems get much harder because we're supposed to have more time at the weekends. Let's see, um, as long as it stays at this difficulty level, I should be able to provide one video a day if it gets harder. Let's see, but I'm very glad you enjoy watching my silly little videos about advent of code and closure.